Assalamu alaikum everyone, I'm Saika, a qualified alima, and I'm back with another video. Today, I'm going to reveal to you the real purpose of fasting. So when we are prepping for exams or doing an essay, we always have a goal. So if I want a distinction for my essay, I would look at the criteria for a distinction and all of my prep is going to be dependent on this criteria to achieve this distinction. If I want to pass my exams, then I would do all of my revision according to a pass grade. Similarly, in Ramadan, when we fast, when we prepare, there is an end goal. What do we want to achieve in the end? And we don't have to do no hard work for this because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already told us what's the purpose of fasting. He said, Ya ayyuhaladina amanu, O you who believe, kutiba alaykum as siyam. Fasting has been prescribed for you, kama kutiba alaladina min qablikum, just how it was prescribed for those before you. And then he says, la'allakum tattaqoon, so that you may attain taqwa. So the entire purpose of our fasting is to attain taqwa. Now, another ayah in Surah Baqarah, ayah number. 21 Surah Baqarah. In that ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Worship your Lord so that you may attain taqwa. So one thing which is clear that fasting and salah, any form of worship is what is going to lead us to taqwa. So without worship, we can't attain taqwa. It's going to be impossible because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us we need to worship him. Now, the thing is, we need to understand what does the word taqwa actually mean so first of all let me tell you the linguistic meaning of this word it's to protect to guard so what are we protecting ourselves against in this case the shari meaning is that we are protecting ourselves from the displeasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we do everything that pleases him and we avoid all of his prohibitions so he is not displeased with us so taqwa it's to protect ourselves and if we want to protect ourselves we want to do good deeds and we want to stay away from all of the bad deeds that means we must think about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time before doing any action allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs to be on our mind so we need to be mindful of him we need to be god conscious of him and when we are mindful of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time that means we are living in the present moment we are not worried about the past done istighfar for that we are not worried about the future we have tawakkul we trust in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but we live in the present moment and in this moment i think every decision that i'm making every action that i'm taking is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pleased with this or is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala displeased with this that's what i need to be thinking all the time in the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the word taqwa hundreds of times it comes many 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 times and the reason is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to tell us what does he expect from the people of taqwa. What are the qualities that people of taqwa must have? So in Surah Ma'idah, ayah number 8, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Be just. It's nearer to taqwa. So justice, it's an attribute of taqwa. In Surah Tawbah, ayah number 109, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A masjid built on taqwa. It's a masjid that he's going to accept. So he's saying good deeds should be done out of sincerity for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sincerity equals taqwa. Justice equals taqwa. In Surah Hajj, ayah number 32, he says, Those who uphold the symbols of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is from taqwa of the heart. So having respect and upholding the symbols of Islam, it's from taqwa. These symbols would include our hijab. These symbols include, like in the Quran, Allah says, Safa and Marwa from the symbols of deen, from the symbols of Allah. So have respect for the symbols of religion. In Surah Baqarah, ayah number 177, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the people of taqwa. What does he say? These people are those who give charity. These are the people who establish salah. Without salah, you can't have taqwa. So if you're fasting Ramadan, salah is a must. Salah. These are the people who fulfill the covenants. When you sign a contract, you fulfill it. And he says these are people who are patient when they go through difficult times. Surah Baqarah, ayah number two. Again, Allah says, these are people who have iman. So people of taqwa are people of iman. And he says, these are people who pray salah, people who give charity. This is all taqwa. In Surah Al-Ra'd, ayah number 33, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the one who bought the truth and the one who confirms the truth are the muttaqoon. 
So the attribute of truth, it's also from taqwa. So this Ramadan, if we can, you know, really prepare and work hard in attaining taqwa, that means we've attained the qualities of speaking the truth, of being just, of establishing a five salah, of giving charity, you know, um, of strengthening our iman. So we are... Uh, not just good Muslims, you know, in fulfilling the hukuk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worshipping him, but we are also good human being when it comes to dealing with people. We want to be good Muslims when it comes to the hukuk, the rights of other people as well. All of this is taqwa. And that's the taqwa we want to attain in Ramadan. And in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the reward of taqwa is what? It's Jannah. And in the Quran, he also tells us who are the people who don't have taqwa. In Surah Al-Shu'ara, he says the Fir'aun, his people, they are not people of taqwa. In the same Surah, this whole list of prophets, Prophet Nuh, Hud, Prophet Salih, Prophet Lut, Prophet Shu'aib, they all said to their people, what's wrong with you? Why don't you have taqwa? How could these people have taqwa when they don't even pray Salah? We don't want to be like these people. Salah and Siyam will lead us to taqwa. So Ibadah. It's essential, okay? So taqwa of Allah can only be achieved if we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ibadah helps us to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's the opposite of remembrance? It's forgetful. It's nisyan. If we forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means we sin. Because you're not thinking, is he happy with me or is he upset with me? Or is he angry with me? We're not thinking about him. That's why it becomes easier to sin. That's when it becomes easier just to neglect salah. It just becomes easier to be rude to people. It becomes easier to have too many bad habits so we don't want to forget Allah we want to remember Allah so basically in this video I want to share with you five points which I will be actually focusing myself on this Ramadan and you know uh, because I'm actually thinking about them myself I thought I should share about them with you as well so the first thing is basically uh, this Ramadan I want to work on having a permanent taqwa and not a temporary taqwa um, I'll tell you, when I was young, uh, I wasn't that religious, I wasn't that practicing. But in the month of Ramadan, I was very practicing. In the month of Ramadan, I prayed my five salah all regularly. Out of Ramadan, slowly, slowly, you know, one salah just cut down, then cut down two salah, and then over time, just don't realize, and you forget to pray salah. In Ramadan, I would recite Quran every single day. After Ramadan, slowly, slowly cut down the Qur'an. And slowly, slowly we don't realize and the Qur'an also gets eliminated from our lives. So all of that means that taqwa I had in Ramadan was very temporary because it just didn't take long to, to be out of my life. And everything changed slowly, slowly. Until next Ramadan came and I had to go through all of that training all over again. So this Ramadan I've decided it's not possible to continue with every single ibadah that I do in Ramadan to do it outside of Ramadan because we do a lot more in Ramadan but if we can take even one good quality which we have worked on in Ramadan i.e. praying five salah on time or praying the hajjud or you know like uh, reciting a bit more Quran any one good quality if I can take it from this Ramadan and make it a part of my life forever and ever, that's permanent taqwa. But if we can take one quality, the most important one which we developed in this month of Ramadan, which we trained ourselves for, and we can make it a part of our life and continue with it, that is permanent taqwa. Second thing this Ramadan, I want to work on, and I want to share this with you all, is self-control. See, we all have desires. Desires emanate from the nafs. So these desires, they don't always have to be too extreme. They can be really basic, like social addiction. It's a desire. Sleeping at Fajr time, you know, you're giving preference to your sleep. It's a desire. Giving preference to fashion over modesty. It's a desire. You know, oh, I've colored my hair and I really want to show my hair. So let's just take the hijab off. This is desire. So we want to control these basic desires. And the way to control the desires is by cutting down on food and drink. Food and drink, it's, it has a direct connection with our nafs. So the nafs keeps on getting a lot of energy the more food and drink we give to it. And when we cut down the food and drink, the nafs gets suppressed as well. And when the nafs gets suppressed, that means the soul, the ruh, takes control. The ruh becomes more powerful. 
And when the ruh is more in power, the ruh loves that spiritual nourishment. It loves that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you know, Ramadan just really helps in, you know, giving the ruh more power. And whatever we control, whichever desire we control this Ramadan, we want to control these desires after Ramadan as well. So in Surah Baqarah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about Hajj, He says, when you go for Hajj, don't fight, don't have arguments. And He connects His fighting and arguments with Taqwa. So what is this? When you're controlling your fight, when you're controlling having arguments, it means you have self-control. So in Ramadan, when we're hungry, we can become a bit moody and sometimes we can become a bit angry. But remember, it's a month of self-control. So if you can control your anger in Ramadan, then inshallah, you can control your anger out of Ramadan as well. But if you can't control your anger in Ramadan, that means you still haven't built the quality of self-control. So we really need to work on self-control so if we can control one bad habit this ramadan and make sure after ramadan we continue controlling that bad habit again we've achieved another quality of a permanent taqwa self-control it's very important thirdly you know ramadan it's the month of fasting it's, it's the month of praying and it is the month of charity and you know when it comes to charity Yes, definitely, we, we give zakah, everyone gives zakah. Uh, but also, you know, like charity isn't just helping the poor and the needy. Charity is also, you know, when you open other people's fast and that's a sunnah. So, you know, we don't have to have grand parties. Personally, I, I think it's quite difficult to have these grand iftar parties, but we should try to offer uh, iftar to others to break their fast, uh, send food to our local masajid. Um, keep it simple, but fulfill the sunnah. Thirdly, I'm going to say, you know, we all have bad habits. We all make mistakes. We all sin. No one is perfect here. So let's start thinking, which bad habit or which sin do I want to basically eliminate this month in Ramadan and replace it with something good? So personally for myself, like I am, I'm quite bad when it comes to smiling. Seriously, like, it's, it's a sun now, we should be smiling, but um, yeah, I want to be approachable, more friendly, and I know I need to smile more. So I always say to myself, you know, I'm going to smile, but then I forget because I'm just not like that. So this month, I have decided if I can smile for 30 days, then, you know, inshallah, I can continue smiling afterwards as well. So this month, again, we are going to try to work on eliminating a bad habit, eliminating a sin and replacing it with something, uh, you know, a good habit or, you know, something good that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ramadan, it can be life changing. Let this Ramadan change your life for the better. Let this Ramadan be the Ramadan which is going to make you regular on Salah forever and ever, inshallah. The fourth thing I'm going to say from the beauty of the Ramadan, it's the environment it creates, the brotherhood, the sisterhood, the unity, the entire spirit of Ramadan. It's so blessed because we are all working towards doing good deeds as a community. You know, I, the fasting is between me and Allah, but the environment that the month of Ramadan creates is like a whole community. Everyone gets together and everyone together is like supporting each other and doing good deeds. You know, we go to the masajid, we are inviting others for iftar. You know, nowadays we do deco for the children and we get the children involved in Ramadan as well. Uh, in, in the month of Ramadan, it just becomes so easy for everyone to recite the Qur'an. We all are watching and listening to good things. Everyone's cutting down anything bad in their lives. And it's become so easy, you know, for the children to get excited and say, you know, we want to fast as well. And an environment where everyone's doing good deeds, it becomes so easy for you to do good deeds as well. So, you know, even after Ramadan finishes, I'm just going to say to all the parents out there, try to create a environment in your house, you know, where you all are praying salah as in jama'ah, everyone's praying together. It's going to become so easy for your younger children to pray salah. Or if your children are a bit lazy when it comes to reciting the Qur'an, you know, just get all the siblings together and, you know, tell them what to recite. They'll all get motivated from each other. So creating an environment um, where everyone prays together. If you have an extra room in your house, make it a, a salah room, a prayer room. You know, it's your little library with all your Islamic books, you know, an Islamic room. 
just create that environment for your family, especially for your children, you know, where it becomes easier for them to do ibadah, where it becomes easier for them, you know, just to fall in love with Islam and do good deeds together. So environment is very, very, very important. And the fifth thing I'm going to say that from the beauty of Ramadan is that it actually helps us to have a soft heart. Why? Because we are thinking so much about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah is always on our minds, it just naturally helps us to have a more soft heart, a more merciful and compassionate heart. And when we have that soft heart, it becomes easier for us to do tawbah, for us to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. It becomes easier for us to forgive others. So, you know, there's a hadith actually about Sha'ban where Rasulullah said, you know, when the deeds of the believers are taken to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the month of Sha'ban, Allah ta'ala forgives everyone except for a mushrik and a person who has animosity and hatred for others. So, you know, we really want to forgive people. We want to have a clean heart, have no hatred, no animosity for anyone, not just your Muslim brothers and sisters, for every single person on this earth. And, you know, that soft heart, it should also help us to be good to the elderly people, to look out for the vulnerable people in the society, uh, to visit the sick, to look after the sick people. See, soft heart just leads to empathy where you feel sorry for others, you know, you think more of the poor and the needy. And soft heart, that helps you to be more charitable. So soft heart leads to charity. Soft heart leads to forgiveness. Soft heart will make us do a lot of good deeds. So this Ramadan, we want to have a soft heart. And that soft heart shouldn't stop at the end of the Ramadan. It must continue after Ramadan. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us this opportunity to train ourselves for a whole month with our community, with our families, where everyone is trying to have a soft heart. Everyone's trying to do good deeds. And and I, I just pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will make this Ramadan a blessed Ramadan for every single Muslim. He helps us all in attaining his pleasure and he's pleased with us all. See you all soon. Take care. Assalamu alaikum.